I see a field medieval. I see an English civil war. I see a battle building up of every battle fought before. I see a burning bridge being built up to heaven on the moor. I see a man who's done with praying and he's preaching civil war. See, sitting in pubs he can rant a story that's biblically dirty. Of cantankerous verses that seem to consist of lines where the stanchions just slightly amiss. But he's preaching and speeching, he's done with such rhythm. When he's drinking and teaching, you sit still and listen. E.g. he'll be... When Adam farmed and Eve span, tell me who then was the gentleman. Each rant he spoke was punished. Each word was sentenced treason. Reason enough to stop him from breathing. But his wasn't death like most of his brethren. Exile and slavery sent to the Caribbean. A Jamaican grave would welcome him. This Yorkshire sugar cropper. This first and whitest slave, worked to death and buried in a sugar fertilising grave. This taproom fanatic gave his sermons to the poor, where he preached a flame redemption for all battles lost before. For the diggers tremble waiting for the troopers by the door, he sermoned fiery redemption and a burning of the law. Though he died and was buried in that bog in Ranter's Bay, his rants were caught in bog with him, so couldn't rot away. So whilst his heaven lies unconquered and his banners have been furled, his flock still preach redemption and the ending of the world. So in this hell that men call cities, there's an English civil war. There's a battle brewing up of every battle fought before. Men are counting down the minutes whilst they gather on the moor to drill and train and fight again an English civil war. So a woman hurries. The clip clop of stolen wooden shoes between the metallic tick tock of the factory clock, she brings news from Manchester, Newport, and Staffordshire, Lanarkshire, and Lancashire. The other shoeless men and women there are planning new beginnings where they get a say. But the truth is, no eyes recognise this brigante queen before them, this northern Bodicea who adores them with everything she does though the weapons laid before them were forged in the flame of her love. See, not being a man, she's no speaking rights, so she waits by the gates on most meeting nights. But then, county to county, town to town, when the lights go up and the sun comes down, she's found war on her lips, love in her heart, and bullets for all to hand round. But even the look of Carty Mundua runs out. So now she's flying and she's running and she's trying to stop her stumbling and the horses' hooves are thundering as they try and chase her down. Cause her name has travelled high to where princes like to dine and they want her back alive so they can write her secrets down. So she's running straight through hesitance with a hangman swinging confidence and she's counting down the steps she takes until she can look down. And her ankles twisted meaning with her shoeless soles all bleeding she's losing any feeling of the shabby mall and ground. And now... There's a field medieval where the lorries all drive in. There's a spy being sent from London. There's an army marching in. There's ranks of blue clad coppers. Men are driving over more. And the roads are cleared round Orgreave for an English civil war. So shirtless and careless, the miners gather to push and pull their way to the road that brings coal to the plant. As they turn onto that road where the lorries unload, the cops split and show them the road to the plant. See, if there are two armies gathering to face one another, then one of those armies must be deep undercover. There's men who don't think that they're fighting a war, but just here to pick it the same as before. Because on one side, there's slick, trained soldiers, violence trembling in their hearts. The other are picking teams before a game of football starts. See, in this field medieval, only one side's come to win. They're the ones with dogs and horses and vans to lock you in. See, the Lord's men wield nightsticks from armoured horses, well trained, well paid, well ready. The other side, they're only armed with anger at their bosses and have to stand with their hands to keep their stomachs steady. All time coheres in the breaking of a bone. The Lord's men have gathered to drive rebel peasants home, whilst the lamb-chopped baseball cap leader leads a chant on a megaphone. The single sound of snapping bone can't swim through the sea of violence, 
and the scream of a single man will be cacophoned into silence so that eternity remains internal to one bone in one man alone on this field medieval and infernal. Because once more lords of England send their thugs on horseback in to uphold the law and show them oars who doles out discipline, who waits and who is waited on, who's brought and who brings in. But if history will repeat itself, it first has to begin. So there's a field medieval, there's an English civil war, there's a battle building up of every battle fought before. A man just finished smoking grinds his fag out on the moor and he makes a few quick phone calls. Cos he's planning civil war.